anyway, whatever. So that's what under heaven it is. And so I guess he woke up uh, only after he allowed himself to get wet off to these things. Now, the, the thing about sorcery is when you engage in it, when you participate in it, the thing that you ask for in witchcraft comes back to you. It, you, the, 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 the ramifications of it hit you in a way that only as time progress you see it, you spot it like an aha moment, but that's like a little, literally just a little too late. My ex wanted me wickedly married and he woke up after marrying to realize that the very thing he slapped me with is now his lot. So he tried to hold it together with sticky tape by continuously investing in sorcery. So after finding out who he was married to on um, on Instagram, because I was uh, uh, upset with him, because I was angry, especially considering mm, Bicice, he decided to go and tell on me, on my family mem members, rather than respond to the email I sent him. I then was like, I, I went, I got petty. You know, petty, P-E-T-T-Y. I got petty. Like, yeah. I did not keep my petty low. It was astronomical because I was upset that he treated me like a child, a, a vic like some kind of a like psychiatric patient that needed to be put in a stray suit. I was so angry. I was so angry. I got upset that I went on and sent him an email again on some, you are doing this to me because you married the woman that was the itch in my scalp when we were together that I almost left you for if you did not cut relations with her. You knew she was a hoe. You knew she was a loose cannon. You knew all she wanted was money to go and buy a fascinator for the Durban July from you, even though you only had a call center salary. You knew she was not to be trusted. You ended up writing her off or even cutting her off because you could not lose me for her. You knew she was a wicked woman, but you still went and married her. And now you are hurting me because Onyete Mosadi, that basically has been with some of they have but they've been with she's been with some of your boys that are alive and breathing today. They can look at your wife and be, and be like, I've hit that. And you are ups you are hurting my life because of that. I went petty and I basically told him, You married a hoe and that's why you're hurting me. I was like, nah, 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 nah. Uh well, what that did what that caused my ex to do because really you don't fight with which you know the bible says um like like what is this playing with your nose or scratching at your nose so too is a man that stirs up contention all you will get is a nosebleed the bible says do not keep the company of fools neither argue with them right because you'll end up being like them something of that nature i was arguing trying to take squinch or revenge out on a person that was sitting on a weapon of uh, of destruction he was sitting on a bomb like a lead on, on, on head what is this he was sitting in a room filled with hand grenades that are called witchcraft he was a man that was involved in sorcery in dark arts, a man that uh, participated in the unfruitful works of darkness in this way. Do you understand? And you do not, when your life is hard, you, when you are yet to find your breakthrough, you don't tease or stir up contention with a witch sitting at the like riverbank of a cauldron. You do not pick at the ear or poke at the nose or feather the ear even of a person when you are going through a lot. You are yet to find your breakthrough. You do not go and grab a feather and then tickle the ear, irritate, agitate the beast that is in a person that is actively involved in witchcraft because it's only going to intensify your spiritual war. This dude put me on a deathbed, on a gurney, like on suicide watch. Do you understand? As soon as I mocked him for this wicked woman that he was with, he went on right ahead and privatized his Instagram account so I can never see what's going on there. I could not care less, right? I noticed that they also had a kid, a daughter, a daughter. This is something, hold on to that daughter portion. That's what I'm eventually going to end up talking about, right? They had a daughter, a very cute little girl, but it was a child with that wicked woman in this wicked union where two little wicked witchy people are involved. Mind you, oh yes, another thing about this wicked girl, right, is that I also got dreams some time ago of before I found out that she she was the one that married my ex and before I would learn that she was the whore basically that everybody was warning me is going to marry my ex and I couldn't care less. I had a dream about her. I remembered her because she was a bane of my existence in our relationship and she was gloating over me in the dream and I couldn't understand why she was gloating over me. My ex was not in the dream at all but she was gloating over me. Much like how can I describe her gloat? You know Tony Braxton's song. Um, He was a man enough for me. Duh, duh, duh. 
Who do you think I am? Don't you know that he was my man? You know how the woman who married the wicked ex of Tony basically was gloating, flashing her ring at her on some, look, he married me even though you guys didn't work out. And Tony Braxton's whole song is premised around the fact that he's a cheat. That's why I'm not with him anymore. He wasn't man enough for me. She was gloating to me in that way, but my, my ex was not in the dream, right? She was just like, like, yeah, well, when I found out that they married, I was like, oh, so that's why you were gloating. Um, and this cheeky was also involved in, so I'm the woman that came into my ex's life, despite him having nothing. I was the ride or die. Now, if you're a whore that is also a gold digger, that passed up a guy because he didn't have much, and then in the future he gets much, and you come into his life, the woman that was ride or die to him during the time when he had nothing at all, you will always be intimidated by her. This chick was intimidated by me when we were together with my ex. She watched how much I helped him grow, and then I broke up with him. And after we broke up, she went getting with him. She could not, I was like a stain on her carpet. There was nothing she could do to get me off, like a red wine stain on her white carpet. She was, I was always at the top of her mind, always at the top of her mind. So to make sure that I don't disrupt whatever they're doing together, she decided, yes, witchcraft, my goodness. She decided to go and put some kind of a spell on um, on me, like, yes, you tag it, like, she decided to put a spell on me that I might not try and go back to my ex because she knew she didn't stand a chance. She knew she did not, if I were to just knock on my ex's door and be like, hi, let's talk. She was as gone as, I don't know, like the pee that you vacuum in your house on cleanup day. It's gone. Like, yeah. She would immediately just get dropped like a hot potato. She knew that. She knew that. Yeah. That's not a comfortable space to be in. The women, you know, second besting yourself. Like, what in the world? I got a lot more dreams about this girl later on. And this time in the dreams, she wasn't so much putting witchcraft on me as she was regretting um, doing what she did because she wasn't getting the love that she wanted from him. Like, if you want to be cherished as a woman, you do not try and blind a man that's still violently in love with a woman, another woman. You don't try to blind him from that woman. What you do is realize that you will never be okay trying to cause a man to forget about an ex he's not prepared to heal and move on from, get therapy, do what is necessary. But he is embittered. And that's why he is speaking so wickedly about her. Women are smart enough to know when a guy is busy bad-mouthing an ex that he is hung up on her as opposed to over her. And my ex bad-mouthed me like no man's business to this woman. Spoke about me like I was some crazy woman. And he would not stop having these conversations about me. And it would cause her a great deal of insecurity even though he was wickedly speaking about me. She was not so naive as to imagine that he actually hates me. She knew that he loves me too much to let my reputation remain untarnished and my my power, oomph, that whatever it is that was the impact that I had in his life to maintain itself as beneficial. She knew that I basically built for her a man that other women would respect enough for her to even want to marry him. She knew that if I did not come into his life as that bridge, that he wouldn't have gotten stronger, gained the muscle that he gained. I was the bridge that took him from boy to man. I proper was. She could not even appreciate me for that. Instead, she decided that she's going to try and cause him to forget about me like you can't like you know witchcraft you think you can do everything with it these people they dabble with it and then they imagine it is their like lucky charm wand that they can wave at any life problem so she goes on and marries a man that she knows is still very much hung up on some other person and then tries to blind him from that woman that is what she did and then she regretted it i got dreams later on where she was basically just like sitting like in a car, like somebody was driving this vehicle, right? Um, somebody else and me, my ex and this girl were in the back seat, right? And she was sitting in the middle of us and she had a thorough comprehension in her mind that if she was not in the middle, that him and I would be sitting together like this. And it frustrated her. It hurt her. It broke her heart. She was poignantly sad that she knows that I am she. I am the thing that is basically the divorce petition between the two of them. If I were to allow him to come back, that she would be old news. That is the kind of stuff that would crush the confidence of any woman. So stop using gorbella women in order to try and force men to marry you when they are still hung up on their exes. The guy needs to go through it. He, <clears throat> he needs to overcome, get over that woman. And then only is it safe and healthy for you to come into the space. He needs to see that it couldn't have worked out. Otherwise, if he still feels as if though if he had done this, change that, hey, there's nothing you can do to resuscitate this guy from the death that he experienced when he was in that relationship.
is that basic. Uh, witchcraft is not a, a magic wand, do it all, let me fix life thing. And to trust on it is to ultimately break your own heart anyway, whatever. Because of me teasing him and ending up with this woman, right? Yo. He then went full throttle scale. She must be completely decimated, destroyed. I went and tickled the feather of a beast and it woke up and pounced on me. And in the witchcraft, he was like, she must never work again. She must never rise. My ex never initially bewitched my career. This time he did. Uh, he just wanted my marriage prospects to be messed up. Uh, area of romance. Now he went for my future, period. And well, the thing about witchcraft, even though it doesn't work on Christians, it does have spiritual effect in the sense that you get macabre, melancholic, you get heavied, you have to fight it off, it's spiritual war, it's demonic attack. And I was already going through it in this very lonely environment and I just got barraged even more. Literally, I was on the precipice of suicide every day because of what my ex did. <sighs> That's when I left him alone. <laughs> I left them alone. I realized that it is uh, pointless uh, for me to try and negotiate for him to to stop with the sorcery because he's not going to do it. He was engaged already in dark arts against my life without seeing me or knowing where I'm at. And as soon as he saw me, he um, just got like even worse than he already was. So I basically kind of, you know, like poked a hornet's nest and a whole bunch of like, you know, bees, hornets came at me and I got stung. I got stung bad and I had to fight that. I had to make war with it and basically repent. Like you don't repay evil for evil with kindness. You must heap coals of shame on them. And I repaid evil with evil by basically mocking him and his whack marriage. I, yeah, I paid hands handsomely for it. I had to survive way more harshly than I would have had to at that stage. Because the thing about his sorcery is it also afflicted the minds of my family members. And so they also became meaner and I got thinner. Anyway, whatever. As in skinnier, I was emaciated. Whatever, fine. So I survived that season by the amazing grace of God. But I learned my lesson. Not to be poking and prodding away at stupid witches when you're going through it, right? Mm. But uh, the daughter that I found out that my ex had, I don't know if they've since then had more children. Um, that is the thing that you also need to bank on the corner. I did make a mention of that. Now, this ex of mine was a way that I was still alive with a mission to come back and basically do a better thing. I also gloated about how I'm covered by Christ and none of your stuff is going to work on me. And so that was years ago when I sent him that email and those were the results. That was the last time I ever like tried to contact him again to ask him to leave me alone or any other, anything at all that I could say to him. But he's still not done with me today. Recently, I went back to Facebook, like this year, sometime. It's September now, so by recently, I'm speaking just this year. It could have been like Jan, Feb, March. And I'm still friends with some of his family members on Facebook. I had deactivated my account and I went back recently. And I was upset, throwing my toys out the cot on Facebook on some goodness. I, like, everybody has just left me abandoned. What's wrong with you? What's with the destituting of an innocent woman? Now, his friends and family members were like, they finally saw... So my ex badmouthed me to his family members, right? They never knew, however, all the information they had was the one coming from him. Nobody ever saw the evidence of what it is that everybody was wickedly speaking about me. And when they realized, from me being back on Facebook, when they realized that he lied, because I'm healthy, I'm sober, I'm rational, I'm temperate, everything about me is in a bunch, but I am also strangely in a really poverty-stricken position. I am not being heard, I'm not being lit, I'm... I also have not been with anybody ever since him. I'm still single. <laughs> 11 years later, what in the world is going on? It just reeked of witchcraft. Where there is smoke, there's fire. So his family members were like, oh my goodness. They put two and two together. They did their own mathematics. And they were like, he went and bewitched the living daylights out of her prospects. Caused her to fall with a thud on the ground. And then lied about her. So we would all forget about it. But now she is suffering. And her life is not coming together. She is still a whole thriving, sober human being. But no one is listening to her. This is witchcraft. And based on how wickedly our brother spoke about her, we can tell that he has been among the people to participate in the mutiny in her life. They, they just did the math themselves. I didn't have to say it in so many words. And so they went back because, you know, blood is thicker than water. 
to them, it they felt sorry for me, but they were like, I'm sorry, I would much rather protect the reputation of my brother because I gotta choose between if it was you know, if it, if I had to choose between my brother and you, Garabo, it's gonna be my brother, it's gonna be my cousin, it's gonna be my friend. So those people in his life that I was still connected to via Facebook friendship, they warned him. He was not on Facebook, I told you he had no social media back when we were together, right? They went to tell him, Garabo is busy flailing on the rooftops crying that her life is messed up because of a whole bunch of witches. Um, we just wanted to let you know. And what that did, every single time my ex-boyfriend sees what I'm doing, every time he sees, he goes even crazier. Oh, just a little bit of a rewind backtrack uh, to the situation with when I was at Naturina, right? At the time, you know Maya's song, Maya, the one from back in the day, that musician in the United States, you know that song, what is it that she wants, da 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 da, -da. what is it that she needs? During the time, in, when I was, uh, when I wrote him, the, when I was at Naturina, I, I, I kept on hearing that song on a loop over and over and over and over again. Basically, my ex went to his uh, wife, at the, uh, you know, the wife, the woman that he married, and was like, she's busy bugging me again. She's stalking me, blah, blah, blah. And instead of this woman being like, just ignore her, she's nothing. You know that she's crazy, so just walk away. Like, you know, if you're secure in yourself and you are the wife of a man and his ex is like bugging him and you know you trust your man you trust him for having to do a better thing right you would not be concerned when this ex that is now apparently crazy and should be in a stray suit is scratching at your man man's door when you're securing yourself this woman is so scared of me she is so scared of me that when my ex goes and tells her she's crazy she wants i don't know what she wants from me she's busy telling me that i'm abc she's insane even her family members agree instead of her being like whatever man just like ignore her like walk away you know there's nothing there like if she's sick dude have compassion leave her eventually she'll just float away type thing instead she got intimidated she shook like a leaf why because that's the thing you know two bandits in a marriage there's no trust there's no honor among thieves they were both into sorcery and they were both into random acts of indiscretion in their lives they had made some horrible choices generally and they don't trust the value and the virtue of humanity because of their own lack of value if you are a criminal you are not going to trust society because in and of yourself you're untrustworthy so this chick knows what kind of a guy my ex is and she knows he is a thief she knows he is crooked and that he's lying about me i was the woman like i said that made him a man from being a little boy so my virtue spoke for me the results in his life ever since i came into it spoke volumes about me she knew i am a woman above reproach she knew my character was excellent even prior to my redemption in jesus christ so she also knew therefore that my ex was lying about me and that he was bitter when we broke up but she pretended to agree that or be shocked when he told stories about my apparent insanity you know when couples gossip she pretended to be like oh my goodness so she went crazy and acted as if though she believed it but deep down inside her she knew that he was lying because he is a thief and there is no honor among thieves and among bandits there is no trust because they know they are untrustworthy they are full of deception and so they don't trust each other and whatever word comes out of each other's mouths they take it with a pinch of salt so my ex's wife never believed him about me especially considering she knew the kind of woman i was back in the day i was with him when he had nothing a character virtue that she lacked do you understand what i'm saying so this man um went on right ahead then my, my ex that is uh to um, tell this wife lady what in the world is going on and instead of her acting calmly on some just ignore the crazy woman because you did say she's crazy right she knew the woman was not crazy and she knew my ex was rather still crazy in love with her and so when i contacted she was freaking out that maybe i want us to get back together or that if at all he were to respond positively to me i would uh then soften up and the two of us would be together she was basically thinking that her marriage was in trouble because i contacted him how in the world do you marry a guy that you're that insecure could leave you for his ex like for crying out loud women just keep putting themselves in a position to be hurt by forcing marriages anyway whatever uh so the thought that was going on in her mind was what is it that she wants because the song of maya maya song among the lyrics is y'all didn't have no kids you share no mutual you share no mutual friends so we had no mutual friends anymore and we don't have kids so why why is she contacting you she was freaking out the, the whole song yeah maya is basically about her being insecure that hit her man oh one minute 
I'm sorry, lighting is not that great right now because I had to close the door um, due to interruptions. I don't have privacy here, so when people move around, I'm just very uncomfortable. Um, I was kind of hoping this wouldn't happen, but let's get to the point. Yeah, uh, the song, yeah, Maya, I will eventually open the door again and the lighting will improve, so just bear with me while the door's closed, okay? Yeah, the, the, the Maya song, she was insecure that her man who has an ex-girlfriend is contacting that ex precisely because she, or she trusts, or that ex is, is, is contacting him because she trusts that the feelings are still mutual, that he still loves her type thing. And so don't talk to her. What is it that she wants? What is it that she needs? Y'all didn't have no kids. You share no mutual friends. She was insecure. She was insecure like no man's business. Um, and the only thing that gave her peace back was me walking away again. So she didn't trust him to successfully just eradicate us. She didn't trust him to just walk away. It's too dark. She didn't trust him. Okay, that should like work out. Whatever. I've opened the door ever so slightly. It's a jar. Um, she did not trust him to stay in a bunch. But she knew that the only thing that would prevent me and my ex getting back together was me. I was the restrainer. I was the one that says the no. <laughs> I'm the one that prevents the reconciliation. So if at all I'm at ease to reconcile, she's always going to be in trouble. Well, rest assured, lady, rest assured, lady, that's not going to like, you know, that, that'll never happen. Whatever. So eventually she gained peace again because I walked away, right? I stopped like poking that hornet's nest. I stopped uh, because it was just like hurting me. Type establishment thing, moving back on then, fast forwarding all these, um, years down the line now i find myself in the position that i'm in today and i told you that whole long winding story to get to one one conclusion one sound and sober conclusion do you understand not conclusion per se but explanation of another bunch of dreams that i got to explain that we're getting to the tribulation now at the time when i was at pretty much throughout my persecution all of these eight years that i've been going through a lot right the lord Upon asking him, what are you going to do to my ex for hurting me so badly? For blocking my prospects? For, like, hurting himself, basically, with all of this witchcraft? When, what, what kind of justice are you going to give me? And I got so many dreams, you guys. So many. Where God had shown me how he's going to deal with my ex. So, back in the day, there was a silly, stupid man. When I was, like, a, a student still, I worked at Rosebank as a what do they call it as a casual like at a retail store I, I used to work there just to make a little bit of cash right as a student i didn't have my own car and i lived very far and you understand i, I want to tell the story real quickly because I, I literally i cannot be here for 10 hours all right i did not have my own car and rosebank is in the north of johannesburg i used to live in the west of johannesburg in florida and i worked all the way up until night time sometimes and I struggled to get home because a cab, a magazine taxi was so expensive, it would basically take my day's wages. So it, it made me working that job useless. So every so often, and, and my, my mom would not pick me up either. So every so often I, because uh, she was like, you chose that job. It's not my, my responsibility to fit you, right? She's never been responsible with me uh, ever. Yeah. Oh, goodness gracious. Sorry. I wanted to lock the exposure there of light. And that happened. Uh, okay, yeah, so so every so often I used to allow myself to be put in harm's way basically by accepting lifts like transportation from random guys that would hit on me. I was like 20 or 21 or something, right? Um, no, nah, in fact, I think I was 19. Like I was nine, it was before, like way before I met my ex-boyfriend. Yeah, uh, when I was 19 going on 20, I was a student at Vitz, I think first or second year or something. Uh, I would then accept lifts. Not like guys would come into the store that I was working at and they would holler at me and then I would allow them to come back later uh, and pick me up and take and drop me off at home. And it's not like I, I was using them. I was single. So if anybody wanted to ask me out, I guess would end up dating type thing. And there was this one dude who was reasonable looking. He was kind of cute, right? He came into the store kind of short though for me, but whatever. At the time I didn't, you know, when you were a kid, you just did randomly. 
whatever so this dude rocked up he was he looked like he could be no older i mean remember i was like 19 he looked like he could be no older than 25 um type thing and he was kind of like you know checking me out he was cute and i was like okay that that's okay and he was he asked me so what time do you finish work and i told him blah 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 what a what a uh, fish paste right exchange numbers and everything that guy did not give me a lift home later on but he did uh i imagine that he would end up being if at all he became my boyfriend the guy who would be responsible for dropping me off at home every day after work you know what i mean because i did not have money for transport i ended up quitting that job because of that same issue because it put me in harm's way in the worst way okay that that little strategy of mine of thinking that i could find a boyfriend that'll drive me around all over the show you know just like it he'll just like it anyway whatever the this guy came the next day so let's say i met him on a friday evening on saturday i thought we were gonna go out for dinner on our first date or whatever i was not working on that saturday so he picked me up at home with a friend of his and i thought we were gonna go maybe to like fredman drive news cafe have some drinks and some slub chips and a burger uh maybe party and then he would drop me off at home because i'm not trying to go out like that on the first date if you know what i mean yo guys pick me up at home in florida like literally pick me up at my mom's house do you understand and then he took me to some house in santon that belongs to obviously a friend of his and then i heard them he told me to wait outside and not come inside and that for me was just like weird on its own and then i overheard a conversation with him and his friend where he was like yo baba immediately early that basically means oh his wife or his girlfriend with whom he lives came home early you cannot bring a side piece here but they did not call he didn't call me a side piece in so many words but he basically said you can't bring this kind of woman here i, I was new i was fresh meat so this dude was now stranded he did not know where in the world to take me now he intended to like do stuff with me in this house and then take me back home what do you think i am a prostitute anyway whatever so i overheard that second guess what in the world was going on and then we went outside left that unit parked in the street in the street right while they were busy deliberating thinking him and his friend and then he came back and spoke to me and he said Garabo, um look we can't go to my friend's house um but it was in santon i remember seeing the tall santon tower the building you know how it's written santon city uh, i i remember seeing it from that angle i don't know where we were we, we could have been in ethel or any of the like surrounding hoods all i know is that i could see the santon tower building uh, sentence written santon city santon, santon city and he was like there are quite a few really great hotels around here we could book into one and i was like book into a hotel why are we booking but hotels are booked into overnight i thought we were gonna have dinner and maybe party and then you were gonna take me back home and he was like no we're just gonna we are gonna eat we are gonna have dinner at the hotel um and i was like is that all we're gonna be doing at the hotel are we going to like sit in the hotel restaurant and eat there is that what this is and then at some point after probing and prodding away at what he's trying to do here when i made it clear that we're not i'm not going to be sleeping with you i i eventually confessed and i told him um, tonight you're not going to be getting any from me you're not having any. and he was like well then what is the point of me booking a hotel if you're not going to sleep with me well at that stage then i realized i was in a whole bunch of rubbish a whole bunch of trouble and i was like okay well uh, if that's how you feel then please take me back home since that's where you picked me up and he was like yo it's far you live far away this is night now it's about like half past nine ten i don't have transportation i'm a kid do you understand and this dude left me there he didn't leave me there sorry I, 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 yeah this is what happened um i panicked i was like what do you mean you're gonna leave me here the vehicle that we were driving in that they were driving was his friends not his right mm, my goodness i made war with this dude i wrestled and tears started coming out of my eyes that you can't just leave me here is i'm in the middle of nowhere and i have no money i have nowhere to go what in the world and it's night time you've like you you're leaving me destitute and my tears i ran to his friend because it was the friend's car now that we were driving that they were driving right i was like please please i begged the friend to take me home and the friend was like okay i'll take you home i'll take you home so i basically negotiated successfully with the friend to take me home and the friend then went to go and drop this guy off at his house lo and behold it was not even a kilometer drive 500 meters is too much perhaps you could walk 
he lived so close to that house, to, to where it is that we were parked outside this one house, that I was like, this dude went to a friend's house with me, didn't go to his own house, putting two to two together, where his house is at, inside there, there is a woman, either a wife or a girlfriend that he lives with. And that's why he couldn't first take me to his house. Because the first place he took me, he was not intending on like feeding me at a restaurant. He was not intending on doing date with me. He just wanted to sleep with someone. My goodness. My battery power is on 20%, so let me try and get this uh, information out as soon as uh, possible. Thank goodness that the power has been restored, but with the phone charging, I don't know how in the world I'm going to hold it up so that it does not... Whatever, let's just talk, right? And hope that we'll get information out as soon as possible. This dude was not intending on taking me out on a first date, even in the slightest. What he ended up doing was just abandoning me because I would not sleep with him. And where it is that he lived, he lived with a woman. And I imagine that woman was a wife. He did not have a ring on. He just looked like a single guy. So basically, I was thrown into some kind of a mess with a married man. And I didn't know it, okay? I was only 19. Who in the world at 19 is busy trying to mess with married men? I don't even mess with them now at 38. More so, can you imagine, was I kind of prudish back then? Anyway, his friend agreed to drop me off. So we dropped this guy off at his house. He felt he was like he wasted his time. He, he treated me like he wasted his time picking me up at my house. Get in the car. After dropping off his friend, I'm sitting there now in the front seat because I was first at the back seat. As soon as we dropped him off, the friend was like, come to the front seat. I'm not comfortable with you being in the back while I'm driving. So I moved to the front seat. And when we were on the M1 South, he drove going back home for me was M1 North and then N1 South. That's how you would take me home. That's how I understood it, right? There is a way to take me home using the M1 South to go to Florida from Santon, but it's literally a long drive. It's the long route. So I couldn't understand what he was doing, especially considering he's the one that picked me up from where I stayed, so he knew how to take me back home. Shortest route. And this dude climbed on the M1 South instead of going on the M1 North and then joining N1 South. Yo, guys, if you're from Johannesburg, you will understand what those highway names mean. As soon as he was on the M1 South, I was like, where are you going? This is not the way home. He was like, see, Alex, yo, guys, Alex is a, a township right next to Santon. I was like, why are you going to Alex? I don't stay in Alex. He was like, no, first we're going to go to my place. And then I was like, am I about to be raped? What in the world is going on? I literally told this guy that I am going to stick my head out the window and flail my hands. It was still early enough in the evening for there to be a couple of cars on the highway. And I will flail my hands on the highway here, basically screaming or shouting to everybody that is passing by in a car that I'm in danger and I'm being kidnapped. If you do not turn this vehicle around right now and take me to where I'm going, I'm going to act a fool. I might even jump out of your car. I was prepared to open the window on the highway, not the window the door on the highway and die and, and dive out even if it meant rolling or even getting hit by another car the way i just had these like survival instincts kick in my adrenaline for me was fight as opposed to um uh, it was both fight and flight right i just wanted to flee i wanted to like i was i was not about to cave to the situation and because of that threat and this guy saw that i was basically reaching for the door handle while the car was moving he was like okay fine whatever God, i'm not taking you to florida it's too far both of them refused to take me home. So because I saw that sign up there, Santon City, I knew that I was in Santon. I was close enough to an environment that I knew. And if I could uh, like be ensconced safe, then maybe I could ride out the night in the, in, in the mall and just in the morning take a taxi home. Because all I had was money for a taxi, but not a maxi taxi. That would be way too much money. Maxi taxi would be the ten amount of an Uber. Yo, guys. This guy turned around and dropped me off at the library in Santon City. And I was sitting there shaking with no airtime in my phone and not sure how in the world I'm going to get home. I had no one to contact. There was this one guy in the mall that uh, had a crush on me, but he was like a kid. I wasn't interested in him. And he, once upon a time, bought me two trucker caps if I would give him my number, right? And at the time, trucker caps were very popular. You will remember, like, during the time when that song, Yeah, Pharrell, came out, we, we, you should stop frowning, babe. Da, da, da. That song, uh, around the same time, there's this black girl in, in the, the song that is wearing a trucker cap, and she made the trucker caps very popular. Like the trend in that music video, Yafarel made trucker caps very popular, right? And I wanted one. I, and this dude offered to buy me two trucker caps if I would give him my cell phone number. So he was um, 
some young guy that was had a dad, uh, a rich dad and mom. They were politicians in this country, and he was very really sweet. And he never ever expected anything in return from me other than me giving him uh, my number. And he would contact me, and we would speak on the phone, and we were friends, even though he was hollering at me. He was kind of decent. He was not forceful. I knew he stayed in Santon. He was a spoiled brat. In and of himself, he didn't have a car or a driver's license, but he came from a rich family, and he had a driver, a personal driver. And I knew he lived in the area, so I sent him like a million please call me. At this point, it was like 10 p.m. at night. I sent him, no, at the time, Vodacom had a limit of five please call me. So I sent him all my five please call me, and he called me back. And when he called me back, I was crying on the phone. I told him what happened, and he came and picked me up. He was basically very chivalrous, um, a knight in shining armor type thing. He picked me up, uh, didn't do anything to me, expect anything from me with his driver and drove me home and went back to his place and comforted me for the next few days thereafter on some, I'm sorry for what happened to you, etc. So that's how I got home, right? I told you that story to get to this particular um, uh, understanding as to what the judgment that God showed me my ex is going to be. Now, my ex was a guy, like I told you, he was known as the good guy uh, among many types. Of, he was the best guy among them all. Never would he ever do that to a woman, ever. This same guy that uh, I gave my number to, right, that abandoned me because I wouldn't sleep with him. The first one, not the second one that tried to take me to Alex. Lo and behold, believe it or not, um, right, I'm when I was years later, like maybe two or three years from that date, I was now working, right? No, not two or three. Two or three is long. Maybe a year and a half, right? I had a job at... Um, I had a job at, uh, I had gotten into some learnership program with this one company uh, at, at Liberty Life, basically. And I was a, uh, a, a like an intern, like 10 amount of an intern there. And I would sometimes be in Bromfontein, therefore at the head office for meetings for the learners, the interns. That's, that's where it is that we would be. And I saw him and he was at the robot's. Almost as if though he was more, more like a, so. Liberty Life. How it is is that there is a, there are two buildings in Bromfontein, like an organization. Imagine a like thank you Twin Towers. Oh, <laughs> yes, T Twin Towers. You know the Twin Towers, the ones that collapsed on nine eleven. It was the same organization, but two different um buildings. Yeah, well, like Liberty Life is like that, right? And there was a bridge connecting the two buildings. There's a lib bridge, and then there is the head office, the main one. Um. So sometimes staff members of Liberty Life would, you would either find them sometimes on the street crossing over from Libridge to uh, Liberty Life, right? The, the main head office or uh, using the bridge um, in order to get from one place to the other, right? So this dude, I think, was going from Libridge to Liberty Life. He was walking again, but I could tell that he was not like a guy that didn't have a car or whatever. He was moving from one building to the other. So I don't know if this meant that he worked for Liberty Life or what. But I saw him there. I was walking because I was indeed going to the taxis to catch a taxi. But he was walking because he was going from one building to the other. But he was using the street instead of the bridge of the company. And I saw him. And when I saw him, I expected him to, like, you know, escape his eyes. Because he, he, I'm the girl that he did that to once upon a time. You remember the shady antic, the shady business that he walked in once upon a time with me? Yeah, I'm that girl. Remember what you did to me? Remember what you did to me? <laughs> ah, Lord, have mercy on me. I thought he would recognize me as the girl a year ago that he abandoned at, at Santon City. Or whose friend abandoned her at, San, at Santon City. Instead, what did he do? I was at the robots. I was headed towards... So he was, I was crossing the robot, running across because I was trying to escape. Like, you know, when you cross a robot when it's too late and you basically have to run, otherwise it's going to go green for the cars. But he was waiting. He was waiting, not in a rush like me. So I was running. And so when, by the time I landed on the other side, I noticed him, I recognized him and he was yet to cross because he was waiting for a safe time to walk across. And I stopped there and I looked at him because I recognized him as the fool, the menace, the beast that did what he did to me and what did he do he thought i was flirting and he was like hi how are you uh so can i get you and i was like this guy doesn't recognize me he does not recognize me as the woman that he afflicted i know that he's a married man and i also remember what he did to me he abandoned me to the dogs whether i get killed kidnapped that night he didn't care and yeah so now so he tried to hit on me again having not recalled who i was he couldn't recognize me hold on to those though that information i had a dream when, when i was asking the lord 
what's going to happen to my ex? Why did he do this to me? Because, I mean, somebody needs to punish him for what he's done type thing. And the Lord told me that this ex of mine, uh, not this ex, this, that guy that picked me up at Santon, that that's how my ex is going to end up. That that's how my ex-boyfriend was going to end up as a human being later on in life. My ex was never that kind of guy. He was never, he, like, in our relationship, he gave me grief with that girl. But he was never, like, one of those flagrant cheats, you know, the guys with two girls in a week, even though Une, even though he's got a steady a main girl. He was never that girl. Never that guy. Sorry. Right? That was what was going on. And the Lord told me that his moral turpitude is going to be through the roof so much in his middle age, in his latter years, when he is a married man, that he is going to become one of those shrivelly, perverted, nasty men that hit on every young little pretty thing that walks around despite being married. married. And he's going to be the kind of guy that as soon as he leaves his house, he's going to take off his ring and then put it on just before he walks into the door in the morning. Not in the morning, but in the evening when he gets home. I was like, oh my goodness, gross. I found that guy disgusting that did that to me and that he would have such a moral turpitude that if a woman doesn't want to sleep with him, he would abandon her in the middle of nowhere at night and not take her back home. That his moral character would dwindle so horribly that he, no part of who he used to be historically would be left in him. So indeed, that dream I got about his mother who was mourning the death of her son even though her son was still alive and breathing, walking around. The Lord was showing me in that dream that the reason why my ex's mom was mourning was because my ex died the moment he married that Jezebel. The moment he married that Jezebel, he spiritually died. And so the mom was like in mourning, essentially, truly. His character, the, the person who he used to be, never to be reconciled again to him, never to be res resuscitated. It is possible, but camel through an eye of a needle. And he will not choose Christ. He will not go through the avenue needle. He will rather make like that rich man and walk away somber from Jesus because the prospect of losing what he gained through Satan will be too taxing for him. That is what Christ was showing me about this particular situation. I mean, can you imagine? Do you understand? Anyway, so when the Lord showed me that my ex is going to end up like that, I was like, oh, gross, or whatever. Um, I guess, you know, you reap what you sowed. You, you have gained corruption now um, because of having reaped into the flesh, uh, so into the flesh. So now you're reaping corruption. So he is now a corrupt man, so corrupt that he would do that to a girl when he's got a baby sister that he loved so much that he would never allow anybody to do that to her. I've seen my ex basically become a monster, a beast, like an incredible Hulk because of some dude that was accosting his little sister. He was very protective. And now he is about to do that to the little sisters and the daughters of other men and women without even batting an eyelid. Out of his character entirely, okay? Dude has a daughter. Dude has a daughter. At least as at last time I checked, just the one. Maybe he's got more kids now. I don't know. Uh, and the reason why he would end up like that would be because the marriage that he was entered into was fostered by Christ who blinded him from the wickedness of the woman he would marry, that he would experience exquisite sorrow in it. The Bible says, and that would be the punishment that he would gain for doing what he did to you. The Bible says that... Um, like a constant dripping on, on a rainy day, so too it is to share a house with a contentious woman. That it is better to live in a desert than to share a, a, a home with a quarrelsome wife. That um, a, a good woman is like a crown of glory on the head of a man, but a bad one is like rottenness in his bones. That a wicked woman tears down her house with her own hands while a prudent one builds it. Do you understand? So basically, the woman folly, when a man marries a bad woman, how it is that it's a judgment from God on this man is that this woman will cause him to live on a desert rather than go home. He will cause this man to rather prefer to be on the corner of a roof then share a house with this woman and this woman will be rottenness to his bones. It is also written, I believe in Math not Matthew, sorry, Proverbs seven about dark women that her feet go down to death, that her end is Sheol. So the reason why my ex's mom was wearing like mourning clothes over her dead son, even though in waking life he's breathing, it's because once you enter into the household of a Jezebel, you go to hell. Her feet go down to death. They, they, they pave a way to Sheol and a man that is headed to Sheol is not a joyful one.